Now coming to the last topic in case of respiratory disorder, which is the deep sea physiology. We have come up with high altitude physiology. The reverse happens in case of deep sea physiology. High altitude, whenever you ascend, the barometric pressure drops. But whenever you go down, what will happen? The barometric pressure increases. So whenever the barometric pressure increases, according to Boyle's law, what will happen to the volume? Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So all the gases will go for a compressed state or the volume reduces. Here we have two things that is called as hyperbarism and disbarism. And all the students confuse between these, these two things, hyperbarism and disbarism. Whenever the person is going deep into the sea, there is pressure increase around the surrounding, surrounding to him. This is hyperbarism. If he tries to rapidly ascend, there are some symptoms, there are the compressed gas are released from the compressed state. So this will cause disbarism. So rapid ascent causing some disorder is disbarism and descent causing some problem is hyperbarism. So this is due to the increased gas pressure and another one is due to the decompression sickness. So first let's try to understand what happens whenever the person is going deep into the sea. For every 33 feet underwater, there is an increase in one atmospheric pressure. If he goes 100 feet, for example, what happens? There will be a 3 atmosphere contributed by the water and 1 atmosphere above sea. So, the total will be 4 atmosphere. At this 4 atmosphere and all, all the gases will be in a compressed state and they will cause severe problems. And all the partial pressure of gases will be increased. And among all the gases, the nitrogen will cause severe deleterious effect because its proportion is around 79 percentage. So, there will be an increase in PN2, there will be an increase in PO2, there will be an increase in PCO2. All of them are increasing. If there is an increase in PN2, it will cause nitrogen narcosis. Narcosis is a term all of us are familiar with. So many of you would have watched Narcos web series also. Here, it acts like a narcotic drug. The person is ultimately dying, but it behaves like a narcotic effect. So what happens in nitrogen narcosis is at 120 feet, the person will be having some aura or he will be enjoying, joviality will be there. But when he goes to 250 feet, there will be severe nar narcosis. This narcosis, the person will feel as if he is intoxicated by alcohol. But ultimately, he will die if he stays there for a longer time. So this N2, the, it dissolves in the fats of the neurons. So, whenever they dissolve in the fats of the neurons, what will happen is the myelin sheath will, uh, conductance will be altered. So, their neuronal system is altered. So, it is also called as raptures of death. And beyond that, for every 10 to 20 feet, it's like taking one martini. Like martini is a drink and it is also called as martini's effect. So, this nitrogen narcosis, the name is so good, but not the disease. The person will ultimately die if he stays there for a longer time. And coming to the increase in PO2, increase in PO2 will cause oxygen toxicity. Too much of anything is good for nothing. In a similar manner, oxygen, whenever its partial pressure is so high, what it is going to happen? It is going to generate loads of free radicals. All the superoxide forms of oxygen are very dangerous. These free radicals can damage all the membranes. And especially the nervous system is affected, leading on to seizures, coma and everything. If it is chronic oxygen toxicity, then there will be pulmonary edema and atelectasis of the lung. So, these are the demerits of oxygen toxicity. Then CO2 toxicity. All of us know that CO2 is good for enhancing the respiration. But whenever it goes beyond a certain limit, like whenever it goes beyond 80 mm of Hg, what is going to happen is it will cause a respiratory depression. So, even the CO2's action is reversed, it will cause a respiratory depression in case of a severe high increase in case of partial pressure. Now, these are the demerits whenever the person is going down. If he suddenly ascends to the upward or the surface, what will happen? There is something called as decompression sickness. This decompression sickness can be called in very, na very different names like Benz, compressed air sickness, Kaison's disease, diverse palsy because it happens in diverse disbarism. So, all these are the same names to the decompression sickness. So, what? why it is called bends? So, now when the person is in having compressed air, it will be releasing lots and lots of bubbles when he is trying to ascend. And especially there will formation of N2 bubbles because its concentration is more. 
So this bubbles can get stuck up in the joints. So there will be pain in the joints. That's why it's called bends. And it can block the pulmonary capillaries. If the pulmonary capillaries are blocked, what will happen? There will be severe respiratory distress. That is called as chokes. And what is the management? All of us know there is some device which we take it and all of us do it for a recreational purpose also. That is scuba. This scuba is nothing but the self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. So if the person is having this breathing apparatus, it will alter the pressures for him so that he will not have this kinds of sickness. Second thing is, what he can do is, there is tank decompression. The person, if he rapidly ascend, ideally he should not rapidly ascend, he should spend more time at various different levels. Just in case he rapidly ascends, then he will be put into the tank and there will be a slow reduction of partial pressure till it reaches the normal depth.